1954's Brown v. Board of Education easily ranks as one of the most important, if not the most important, Supreme Court decisions ever. There, the court ruled that the separate but equal doctrine that had passed for equal protection for over half a century was itself unequal, and that racial segregation in public education was unconstitutional. A year later, the case returned to the court in what is commonly called Brown II, as the court considered appropriate remedies. As school districts desegregated with varying degrees of enthusiasm or resistance, what was a federal court's role to be? Parents of several African-American students had challenged racially segregated public schools in state and federal courts nationwide. In Brown, Oliver Brown claimed that segregated schools in Topeka, Kansas, violated his daughter Linda's right to equal protection. After a three-judge district court panel applied Plessy v. Ferguson and upheld the district's racial segregation, the Supreme Court took up the case, then issued its famous decision. The court's decision was unprecedented in scope. In a single unanimous opinion, it had declared unconstitutional a long-established practice in most American public schools. Some schools would dutifully and voluntarily desegregate, but many would fight desegregation tooth and nail. The court knew this, so its decision closed by setting the case for re-argument regarding the appropriate remedy for this systematic segregation. 